I know some of you are thinking, wait, is, is there a second message today? Oh, you're looking kind of... <laughs> All right, so, you know, one of the things that I appreciate about our Bread of Life Christian Children's Center is our, our kindergarten class, which provides a very up-close and personal opportunity for our kids to learn. And I appreciate Doreen Joe, who taught our kindergarten class, is our pioneer instructor for a number of years. And currently, Melody Ma has been teaching this class for a number of years as well. And so one of the great joys that I have is being a part of what they are learning and whether it's sign language or thinking with them about the things that uh, they are being stretched and challenged with. And so this last week, and here's a little picture up here, they had a theme called the Thankful Heart Thanksgiving Fun. And so naturally, as they had a shortened week and a time to celebrate God's goodness, they had opportunities to not only do arts and crafts, but also to enumerate and to think about some of the things that they're thankful for. This is some of the things. You, I don't think you could really see a lot of it, but let me share with you a few of them. One student said that they are thankful for family, friends, best buddies, playing together, mermaids, and princesses. Another student said, I am thankful for turkey, family, cooking, hugs, kisses, water, and Pokemon. Another student said, race cars, helmets, pilots, armor, firefighters, motorcycles. So you can kind of tell who the boys are and who the girls are, the things that they're thankful for. Another student said, friends, family, flowers, life, everything. And one last one I'll share with you. He is thankful for God, Jesus' forgiveness, Jesus, food, and water. And when our hearts are thankful... When our hearts are genuinely grateful, we'll consistently do two things. The first thing that we will do is that we will magnify God's worth with our praise. Because thankful hearts drive us to elevate God's goodness. We become a vocal worshiper. And some of you might have been thinking during the kids' message, I like kids' messages. Those words make sense to me. It's communicating on my level. I could grab my heart around those ideas. When we think about how God is good and how that should prompt us to talk about God's goodness with others. Because praise is never complete unless it's vocalized. It's not simply what I feel inside as an individual, but it's what I vocalize and share with others around us. Because public praise is the full expression of a grateful heart. It's not just keeping it in a journal. It's not just simply keeping it in our hearts, but it's communicating with others. Because there are others, even as we think about the goodness of God, there are others that are wrestling with the goodness of God. When we feel that God has blessed us, then there are also others that are wondering where the blessings are. And so the blessings that we rehearse and share with others can have a way of shoring up and strengthening the faith of others when it's somewhat wobbly, when they're having questions and doubts about the goodness of God. A second thing that we will do is that we will challenge God's people in their pursuits. Because thankful hearts empower us to champion God's holiness. Along with being a vocal worshiper, we also become an inspiring teacher. You see, gratitude is not a soft attribute. It's not a secondary virtue. But it's at the heart of what it means to be a follower of Christ. It's at the core of a genuine worshiper of God. And someone who is truly grateful has tasted and discovered the goodness of God. And when we have experienced God's goodness, then we become an advocate for his holiness. We begin to champion God's way above our way and move others toward the kind of righteous life that God desires. 
And so what we're going to do is I'm going to give you a brief adult message, just like we had a brief children's message. And so I'd like you to turn in your Bibles to Psalm 34. It's page 478 in your blue Bibles, or it's printed in its entirety in your handout this morning. And we're going to think together about how God is praiseworthy, that is, he is deserving of the honor and the worship and the power that we could ascribe to him. Thankful hearts elevate God's goodness, and we see that in the first 10 verses of Psalm 34. Thankful hearts drive us to elevate God's goodness. It's what we resolve in our hearts. I will extol the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. I will glory in the Lord. Let the afflicted hear and rejoice. And that's exactly what we're going to do this morning. We're going to give you the opportunity to offer up praise to God. And as you do, there are some in our congregation that feel afflicted, that feel a deep sense of need, that have questions that are swirling around their hearts. And they need to hear someone who is standing up and offering praise to a God who is good, who is worthy of our trust, because their faith is struggling. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. Those who look to him are radiant. Their faces are never covered with shame. The poor man, this poor man called, and the Lord heard him. He saved him out of all of his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him, and he delivers them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in him. Fear the Lord, you as holy people. For those who fear him lack nothing. The lions may grow weak and hungry, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. Thankful hearts are driven to elevate the goodness of God because we come to recognize that when we truly fear God and live in an awareness of his presence, then God will take care of us and we will lack no good thing. Thankful hearts also empower us to champion God's holiness. It's what we communicate in our relationships with others. And that's the focus of the last 12 verses. Come, my children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Whoever of you loves life and desires to see many good days, and who doesn't want to see many good days? This is the key. Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from telling lies. Turn from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are attentive to their cry. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil, to blot out their name from the earth. The righteous cry out, and the Lord hears them. He delivers them from all their troubles. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. The righteous person may have many troubles, but the Lord delivers him from them all. It's a verse that is totally realistic. The righteous person may have many troubles, but the Lord delivers him from them all. He protects all of his bones. Not one of them will be broken. Evil will slay the wicked. The foes of the righteous will be condemned. The Lord will rescue his servants, and no one who takes refuge in him will be condemned. So the songwriter and worshiper of God underscores the critical importance of a thankful heart, that it drives us to elevate a God who is good, and it also empowers us. It gives us a platform to champion the holiness of God. Father, we recognize that it could be so easy for us to move 
through our lives that we fail to slow down and to think and to rejoice over the way that you have blessed us in so many ways. And Lord, sometimes it takes a holiday like Thanksgiving to stop us in our tracks and to bring us to a renewed appreciation for you as the God who is perfect in goodness, who is absolute in holiness. Lord, help us to be boys and girls, men and women that are fearing God, that are loving holiness, and that are speaking well of you to others. And so we pray that through the praises of your people, that others would come to worship you as the God who is worthy of our praise. And we pray this in Jesus' name.